the chapter where Jesus was talking about all kinds of teachings. He was teaching about hypocrisy, about not to worry, but we're going to be talking about the faithful servants and the evil servant. I'm going to be starting in Luke 12, verse 35. And it says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. So when he's talking about let your, your waist be girded, because back in those days, they used to have to wear those long robes, right? The long flowy robes. So everywhere they walk, if they have to walk, if they have to run, if they have to work, they have to pick it up and tie it. So if they did not do this, they're going to be tripping, <laughs> all right? They're going to be tripping all over themselves, and um, or they're going to be hindered from doing their job. So here Jesus is saying, let your waist be burdened and your lamps burning. He's talking to us, okay? Our, of course, we're not walking around with those long, flowy things anymore, you know? But spiritually speaking... We need to be in a place where we are ready, active, and diligent in the work of God. We always need to be found as faithful servants doing the work of God. And if so, whatever it is that's hindering us, whatever it is that's tripping us up, we need to tie it, get rid of it. We need to get rid of the problem. So... That's the first sentence. And he says, and your lamp's burning. So you have to be ready, active, diligent, and keep your light lamps burning. Of course, in this time, he's talking about the oil-based lamps. It's not like today where it's candles and everything else, right? So if we're going to keep our lamps burning, it kind of reminded me of the five wise virgins. You know, it reminded me of the five wise and the five foolish. The five wise had oil and enough oil for their lamps. And the foolish did not have enough oil. But as I was thinking about it, okay, what does that mean for us today? Today, the scripture in Psalm says, Lord, let your word be a lamp unto my feet. So what needs to keep burning in our lives? It's the Word of God. The Word of God is what needs to be active, diligent, and we need to be diligent in His Word. We need to be ready to do His Word. We need to live His Word. That's the only way we're going to keep this lamp burning. Because if we're not living the word, if we're not doing the word, if we're not even hearing the word, we're going we're gonna to burn out. Because it's just us. We have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. And we need to let go of what doesn't belong in our lives. That's part of it. That's only the first scripture. We need to get rid of what hinders us. Right now, the enemy's lying to people so much. The enemy is attacking people so much, spiritually, physically, mentally. You see a lot of Christians that are hurting. You see a lot of Christians that are going through it. They're oppressed. They're depressed. There's so many things happening in the kingdom of God. But are we girding our waist? Are we having the lamp? burning in our lives if not then what do we have to hold on to because if we're not holding on to Christ and we're not doing his work we're not letting his word be that light then what do we have in reality we have nothing so he goes on in verse 36 and use yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. So, these are servants who are always expecting. 
they're always in expectation of the master's return. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is. It can be midnight, one, two, three, four in the morning. These servants were in expectation of their master's return. So they never fully fall asleep, right? Because as soon as they hear the master, they get up and go answer. These are servants who truly wait on their master. And that needs to be us. We need to be servants of God who are always in expectation of our, of our Lord's return. We need to always be waiting and looking to his return. Because I ain't trying to get stuck here. <laughs> I'm not trying to get stuck here. And he wants those people that are ready and able and willing to get to him when he gets there. So he's saying like, it didn't matter what time of day I arrive, you are waiting for me. We as Christians need to have this heart. We can't forget that we are waiting for the Lord's return. Unless we forgot. Unless we don't believe. If we don't believe he's returning, then we're just going to go through the motions. We're just going to go through the mechanics of Christianity. But that's it. Nothing more than that. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find them watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. That means he will find them always alert and find that the test of their spiritual life is instilled in them. But... In other words, the servants have allowed godliness and the fruits of the Spirit to be proven in their life. How do things get proven? They have to get tested. Like crash dummies, they prove a car, it's safe and everything else because they have to test it over and over and over. So in our Christian walk, we're going to be tested is your spirituality true? Is your spirituality genuine? And if we are spiritual, if we are spiritual, then we are always going to be on alert with God. We're not going to fall asleep because we're always waiting. And we're always waiting. I'm not saying you're never going to sleep, okay? I'm not talking about physical sleep. <laughs> I'm talking about spiritually. Spiritually, you will not fall asleep. Because you're always aware of God. You're aware of God's leading. You're aware of God's moving. You're aware of God's guidance. You're aware of his work, of his wants, of his desires. So when he comes back, he wants to find those servants that are always alert. And that godliness and the fruits of the Spirit are being in, instilled in their life. These he will receive. And he will let us enter into his rest. So those that he finds um, alert, I will, he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. He's talking about entering into his rest. He's talking about the benefits that we get in eternity. The benefits that we get of salvation. That Christ himself will come and give us his rest, will come and serve us and minister to us. How amazing is that? How beautiful is that? That the king of kings, the master, is willing to say, you rest, let me take care of you. Why? Because he found you doing his work. Because he found you being obedient. Because he found you serving him. He found you always ready to wait on him. Just like a waiter, always willing to wait on him. This is why he will serve you, because he found you faithful. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them, so blessed are those servants. So in other words, any time of the day, we don't know the time, but God knows the time. But know this, 
that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. You need to be prepared for whatever time that the Lord comes, that He decides to come. He's telling us, be prepared for the Lord is coming at a time when we can we don't expect it. We're not aware. We don't have that knowledge. They asked Jesus, okay, when is all this going to happen? He said, only the Father knows. So when the Father tells Jesus it's time, then it's time. But nobody else will know. Only those that are found ready. And he goes on and says, Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food and due season? <laughs> I love when he doesn't just straight up answer you. He always goes around the question. You know what I mean? Because in the next section, he's talking to leaders. He's talking to um, to um, five-fold ministers. He's talking to leaders. So in other words, he was talking to his disciples. He was talking to his disciples. And he was saying, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Who is that overseer? Who do we consider overseers today? The five-fold ministers. Prophets, apostles, or yeah, prophets, apostles, teachers, uh, evangelists, pastors. He's saying they're the overseers, and he will make them overseers over his house. That he already appointed. The Lord appointed certain people to be over his household. To give them their portion. That means their position. He will give them their position. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. At an hour when he is not aware. And will cut him. Oh wait, I think I skipped one. Sorry. Verse 45. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Whoa. He's saying, if this overseer, if this leader, if this minister in his heart says, the Lord is too slow, the Lord is Caring, then they stop expecting the Lord's return. And what happens when people stop expecting? They get comfortable. They start to go backwards. They start to do things that they used to do. And this, these leaders, they began to mistreat the other people. They began to mistreat the people of God. How is it that today we have pastors and leaders over churches that can have adulterous affairs? That look more like the world than a Christian. How is that possible? Because they stop expecting the Lord's return. They no longer are preparing themselves. They're no longer alert. They're no longer waiting on the Lord. So where did their reverence go? When we have a reverence for God, believe me, we do everything in the fear of God with respect. We respect God's people because it's like, if I mess with him or her, God's going to mess with me. If I mislead them, God's going to deal with me. If I lead other people astray, God's going to deal with me. There's a reverence for God. But these leaders in their heart 
turned away from God. These leaders in their heart stopped expecting the Lord. Therefore, they said, eh, we'll see when he gets back. I don't know, but I'm going to enjoy everything I can right now. And the Lord saying, the Lord, that the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion to with the unbelievers. Wow. He got a severe judgment. That means if, he's an, if they're unbelievers, they're not making heaven their home. Why is that? Because they stopped reverencing the Lord. They stopped believing. They stopped believing the word because the word tells us he's coming back. The word tells us stay on alert. The word tells us the enemy's out there roaring like a lion, waiting to see who he even devour. So the word, when we're in the midst of our trouble, we remember the word and the word encourages us. And we take our encouragement back into the Lord and we dig in and we say, Lord, let's do this. Lord, let's continue to go forward. Lord, give me your strength. Lord, give me your courage. Lord, give me your peace. Because I'm struggling. That's how we keep it alive. Because we put ourselves back into the things of God. But if in our hearts we start to stray away from God, what then do we turn to? The only thing we have left to turn to is our flesh. And our flesh gets into a whole lot of trouble. In case we forgot before we came to Christ. <laughs> Let's remember how we were before we came to Christ. No thank you. I don't want to go back. I would rather be found doing the work of God. Encouraging myself in his word. Doing what he needs me to do. Being always ready, being always alert, tired, I don't care. I need to do this because I surely don't want to think that just because I have the title that I'm okay. Because the title did not, by any means, save this person. As a matter of fact, the Lord threw him out with the unbelievers. He got the same judgment as they did. And so this is important. We need to keep our eyes on Christ, especially during these times. We need to remember the Lord has a plan. The Lord is going to return. Though it might not seem like things are happening right now. Though it seems like things are just dragging on. The Lord has an appointed time for everything. The Lord has his way in all things. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. So here he's talking about a servant minister or a leader. If he did not make himself ready, who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will. In other words, this is somebody who knows God's commands who knows God's will, who knows what God requires of them, and yet they still don't believe. And they still refuse to repent. He's saying that he's going to be dealt with many stripes. That means he's going to get dealt with. You know, he's going to get dealt with. And these are people who have been privileged and these are people who grew up in church. These are people who have parents that reverence God or grandparents that reverence God and taught you from your childhood. Or people who have many teachers, you know, because sometimes in Christianity, sometimes we get lucky and we have godly people pouring into our lives and pouring into our lives and pouring into our lives. Sometimes we get lucky and we have parents or grandparents who pour God into us, pour God into us, grew up in church. He considers those privileged people. That means you know better. And if you know better and don't do it, 
and still allow sin to be part of your life and still allow sin to rule your life, you're going to be dealt with severely because you know better. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beat with you. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. So these are the ones that have little knowledge or few teachers or no teachers. For more than half of my Christianity so far, I had no teachers. And I had to learn a lot through trial and error and through the Holy Spirit smacking me upside my head. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't do that. Reading the word. Oh, I just did that. You know, letting the word deal with me, God dealing with me. I had no teacher, so I had to learn the hard way. So the ones that had no teachers had little teachers or little knowledge or understanding of God. He's not so hard on them. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. Because if ignorance is bliss, you won't get in as much trouble as if you know something and you do nothing about it. If you know God's will, if you know what God wants you to do, if you know um, what the word of God says and you don't do it, then you're going to have to answer to that. But at the same time, if you don't know much, but are willing to learn. God has that mercy on us. God has mercy on us because we want to learn. But at the same time, where much is um, much is given, much will be required. So understand, if you want to step into positions, if you have a desire to step into um, positions that God wants to give you, you need to understand that much has to be committed to your care and much will be demanded from you. There will be much demanded from you. So if you want to get up and preach the gospel, there's going to be a demand on your life. You got to be walking it. You got to be living it. Coming up here and preaching the gospel and preaching the word of God, there's a certain... Um, not heaviness, but there's a certain thing that God puts on you because you are now being required of. So whatever we teach, other people are going to be watching. Do you do the same thing? Or is it all talk? Is it all show? Because we can't be up here for show. Believe me. Position has nothing to do with show. Position has everything to do with obedience, surrender, and sacrifice. Ministry, servanthood, leadership has everything to do with your relationship with Christ. Because if we have a relationship with Christ, then we are going to be those faithful servants. And when he calls upon us to do a work for him, we are ready. We're alert. Why? Because the trials have already tried us. Why? Because we've already walked that place. If God sends you saying, go and talk to this person and go and tell them this. And then start to tell you their life story. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, I have literally walked through this. I've been there. See, you went through that to help that person or help others. Everything in our life has to do with God. Everything in our life has to do with God preparing us for the things he desired for us. I would have never thought 10 years ago that I would be working with women. 10 years ago, I didn't even like girls. <laughs> I thought they were too much drama. And here, years later, God has me doing something that, no, I would never, never had agreed to. But all those years before I got to that point, God was working things out in my life. God was dealing with my pride. God was dealing with my sacrifice. God was dealing with my obedience. How can I tell other people, especially women, uh, you know, you need to obey if I'm not obeying? How can I tell others 
love your husband if I don't love my husband? How can I tell others to, um, you know, teach your children, love your children if I'm not doing it myself? How can I tell others you need to be an example if I myself am not an example? We need to understand everything we do for the Lord, He sees. Maybe others we can fool for a little while, but the Lord we can never fool. And He has everything for an appointed time. He has everything in His in set up. And I was thinking about it. And in Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it says, Then the Lord, because this was Habakkuk, he was complaining, okay? He was complaining because of all the injustice and all the things that were going on at that time. And he was asking the Lord all kinds of questions. And the Lord answered Habakkuk here. But today, I know I'm not the only one. I've been asking a lot of questions lately. I've been asking a lot of questions because it seems like a lot of people are getting away with stuff. It seems like evil is growing. It, seems, it feels like evil is getting away with the, everything. It feels like Christians are being pushed down, pushed to the side, trying to trample Christians. But then the Lord said, then the Lord answered me, said write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry so the Lord has an appointed time for everything he has an appointed time for his work he has an appointed time for his return. He has an end to everything. If you are in the midst of a trial, there's an end to it. If God has given promises, wait for it. Even though it might feel like it's taking its time, God is preparing everything to make it happen. There is an end to the struggle. There is an end. Even though in this life, there's always going to be some struggle. Remember, he promised his servants entering his rest. We will get our rest. Maybe not on this earth, because there will always be a new problem. Once we get rid of one problem, here comes another problem. You know what I mean? And sometimes when it rains, it pours. Sometimes it feels like you're getting hit left and right. And there's no time to even catch a breath. But even to that, there is a time of rest. Even to that, if you stay in expectancy and wait on the Lord, He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for His body as a whole. He has a plan for this world. Some for judgment and some for blessing. I would rather be on the blessed side because I ain't trying to burn in hell. <laughs> That's just it. I'm not trying to go there. But at the same time, as Christians, sometimes we can get tired. Sometimes we can get weary. Sometimes we can get frustrated and feel like things are not happening or not happening as fast as we want it to happen. And sometimes we get what we want and realize, wow, that's not what I was expecting. You know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to be different. And there comes new trouble, new problems. But God wants to commit certain things to our lives. God wants to put certain things in our care. Whether it's preaching his word, take care of the word. Let the word become part of you. Live out the word. If it means um, encouraging your brothers and sisters, encourage them. Take care of them. Care for them. Commit yourself to that work. If it means doing things in the background, if it means administration, whatever it is it, that God has put on your heart, care for it. Because it's a work for God. It's not our work. It's not for us. It's for Him. It's for His glory. 
It's so that he can have his way. We don't want to be those that get tired and stop being aware. Get tired and stop being alert. We don't want to be the ones that are found that have went backwards and now look like the world. We want to look like Christ when he returns. We want to be the ones that he finds faithful and he says, come on in. Well done, good and faithful servant. We want to be those that he says, come on in and I'm going to serve you. I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to bless you. Amen. Father, we...